Hi, hey everybody. Welcome back to another live stream here, a live smart class. Um, I'm your teacher today, Sean. Welcome back. If you've been here before and if it's your first time, welcome. Um, we've got Lane, in, our friendly moderator, on the side there to help you guys in the chat. If throughout the, uh, the class you guys have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat. Any comments at all, put them in the chat and Lane will try to get them to me and we'll, we'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can as we go through. Okay, so let's get rolling here. Let's get started with today's lesson. So last week we were talking about the different types of sentences in the English language. And this is kind of where we're going to, we're going to pick up here today, okay? Let me make this nice and big so everybody can see it. All right, there we go. So last week, if you were here, we talked about a bunch of things. And I'll just uh, take a, a quick moment just to review what we did last week, just to catch everybody up. And then we'll build on what we did last week to, and expand on it and get a little bit uh, deeper and more, more complicated as we go. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about complex sentences. If you're a smart student already, that's English 125, Unit 2 and you can go into the writing section 2-2. If you're not a smart student, don't worry. Just uh, stay with us and we'll, we'll take care of you, okay? So last week, if you were here, this is what you did. If you weren't, this is what you missed. We talked about the difference between phrases and clauses. We talked about the difference between independent and dependent clauses. And then last, we talked about the first two types of sentences in the English language, right? We said last week that there are four main types of, of sentence in the English language. Um, really only three, the fourth one is kind of a, a combination of two. And last week we talked about simple sentences and compound sentences, okay? So this is basically what we did last week and we're gonna continue with that, all right? So I thought rather, rather than get me started by, by uh, talking a bunch, I'm gonna get you guys to do a quick little bit of work, okay? So I'm gonna put something up on the screen for you to check out. The question is simple or compound, okay? So I want you to look at these four sentences that I'm gonna put up here right now, okay? And I'm going to disappear for 30 to 60 seconds, not a long time, but just to catch everybody up on what we did last week. Four sentences here, and if you can tell me, all you need to do is tell me, are they simple sentences or are they compound sentences, okay? and Please put your, uh, your answers in the chat, and then we'll go over them together, okay? So a quick minute, simple or compound, okay? Go to it, and I'm just going to move out of the way here so you guys can, can see the whole sentence, all right? All right, everybody. Good, you guys work fast. So lots of, lots of answers coming in on the chat. All right, so let's go over them together, all right? And then we'll get into some new stuff today. All right, so looking through the chat, lots of stuff coming in. We've got Jasmine says, looks like that she thinks the first sentence is 
a compound sentence. So she passed the exam, but she did not complete the final assignment. So that's absolutely right. If you said compound sentence, that is correct. So number one is uh, compound. And here's why. Let me just quickly tell you why. Um, you've got she is the subject, and past is your verb there. So you've got a full clause. And then here you've got she, again, the subject, and complete is your verb. All right, so you've got two clauses there connected with uh, the comma and the conjunction but. And this is exactly what we talked about last week. This is great. Where you've got two independent clauses connected with the conjunction. Your fanboys from last week and that comma, that's a compound sentence. Perfect. All right. Number two, looking for a couple more here. John's back. All right, good to see you, John. And he says that number two is a simple sentence, and he is correct. Awesome. Okay, so it's simple because, as we said last week, a simple sentence has one subject, one verb, and one idea, basically, right? I mean, there are some exceptions to that, which I'll talk about in a minute. All right. Now, as I mentioned last week, simple sentences don't always have simple ideas in them. They're not always super short. Here we've got a, a phrase in there, but that doesn't change um, the sentence at all. It's still a simple sentence. Good. Okay. Also, again, if you guys have questions about anything that I'm saying while we're talking about it, um, put it in the chat and we'll, and we'll get to it, okay? So number three, we said, let me see another answer here. All right, um, Kara, does she have an answer there? Oh, I missed it. Okay, somebody's saying that number three is a compound sentence. Now, I'm, I think I'm trying to kind of trick you here for, for number three. I knew that some would say that it's a compound sentence, but it's actually um, a simple sentence. Sometimes I like to trick my students a little bit, but here's, here's why. Okay, so airlines is your subject. Okay, you've got continue as a verb. Now you do have reduce, that is a verb, that's true. So it's got two verbs in this sentence, but only one subject there. Okay, because of airlines, the only subject that is, that's a simple sentence, and both of those verbs go back to that one subject. Okay, so don't be fooled sometimes by the word and there. Okay, I know that sometimes we said that we use and to connect the ideas, but there always has to be a, a subject after and for it to be a compound sentence. Okay, um, look at number one, for example, just to clarify, number one, you'll notice that we said that we got, we've got but there, right? But you notice that there's a comma before but because of the subject after but. Okay, you get the subject after but, and you get the comma before it. In number three, there's no subject, so there's no comma, and it's a simple sentence. Okay. Got a question coming in from Veronica. It says, because PH in second part, there is no subject. Yeah, I think that's exactly what she's talking about. For number three, yeah, there's no subject in the second part, so that there's no, uh, it's a simple sentence. Exactly. Good. Okay, what about number four? He missed the shot. The game was over. I think most of you uh, saw that as a compound sentence, and you're correct. Again, you've got the subject and verb there. And let me move over a little bit to the side. All right. You've got the subject and the verb here, and that means it is a compound sentence. Now, I'm just going to pop out here just so you can see the full screen. I'm going to disappear. Okay. So you've got the full sentence there. The first part, you've got one clause there with a subject and a verb that's independent all right and then the second part the game was over that's an independent clause too with the with the semicolon in the middle that is definitely a compound sentence good okay so let's talk about that number four for a second let's let's really talk about that that semicolon there and something that i mentioned last week about having choices so here let me pop back in all right, I'm back. So you've got two different things going on in this, in this screen. He missed the shot, the game was over. He missed the shot, the game was over. It's the same, basically the same thing, but the difference is you've got here, semicolon, 
and here you've got the period. Now oftentimes students ask what is the main difference between these two things and really when it comes to meaning, the meaning is exactly the same. Nothing is different at all between the first one and the second one. Really the only difference is the first one is one compound sentence and the second one is two simple sentences and that's it. Okay, so it's kind of your choice. It's a style choice really. If you decide to connect your sentences and make one compound or leave them separate and have two simple sentences. All right, so you definitely have options and as I said last week, you want to vary the type of sentences you're using. You want to uh, switch it up and have some short sentences, long sentences, and that kind of thing. Okay, so just to clarify, just so we're all on the same page before we get into the complex sentences, one more that we saw last week, an example of a compound sentence, Jamie is happy with her IELTS score overall, however, she was hoping to get better results on her writing. So subject and verb, good, subject verb here, okay, and then you've got however the, the adverb in the middle, kind of connecting the two to make a compound sentence. Watch a little magic trick, there, okay, so the thing that's changed is the semicolon becomes a period, you capitalize the H, and now you have a new sentence, but the meaning is the same. So again, you've got one compound sentence here, or two simple sentences here. It's entirely up to you whether you, you do one or the other, okay? So, um, there, there we go. That's the, the two examples together, exactly the same meaning. But let's talk about complex sentences, okay? Complex sentences is the, the third that we're going to be um, looking at. Sometimes it's the one that, that causes the, the most confusion with students, but it's, it's quite simple, all right? Um, complex sentences. What is a complex sentence? A complex sentence must have at least two clauses, okay? So it can't be a simple sentence. It has to have two clauses at least or more. And here's the difference. So compound sentences also have at least two clauses. However, in a complex sentence, you have one independent clause, which sometimes we call the main clause, and you have at least one dependent clause, okay? so. You can have more than one, but you have to have only one independent clause. Now, I'm, I'm throwing a lot of um, kind of technical words uh, out there. I mean, don't worry too much about the terminology as long as you understand how to use the sentences and how to properly punctuate, then you'll be, you'll be fine, okay? I'm sure a lot of native speakers have no idea what an independent clause is, but so don't worry about that too much, all right? Let's, let's look at an example to try to really um, understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, so the example is, the student did poorly on the exam because he misunderstood the essay question. Unfortunate, yeah, we've, we've all been there perhaps. So this is a complex sentence, all right? Um, why is it a complex sentence? You've got a subject and a verb, and you've got another subject and another verb here, okay? So you definitely have two clauses going on here. This is what we call the independent clause or the main clause, all right? The student did poorly on the exam. And this is your dependent clause, okay? Because he misunderstood the essay question. Now let's break it down, a little reminder of last week, and talk about what is the difference, okay? So the first part, the student did poorly on the exam. That's an independent clause because all I need to do is pop a little period there and you've got a complete independent sentence, okay? Independent clause, complete sentence, it can stand alone and you can walk away and you're done, okay? The student did poorly on the exam, finished, that's fine. So that makes it the independent clause. What you can also do here is we'll, we'll take away the next part look at the, the next clause. Because he misunderstood the essay question, this is your dependent clause, okay? Why is it dependent? Because, because, all right? Because I see here that, again, 
uh, yeah, John is putting it up here. He says, because makes the difference. And that's exactly what we're looking at. In this sentence, or in this clause rather, the, the uh, conjunction because creates a dependent idea. And, and here's why, because it's incomplete, okay? And again, I'm not talking about spoken English. If you're speaking to your friend and, and, and your friend says, why didn't you come to the party? And you say, because I was tired, that's fine. There's no problem with that at all, okay? This is entirely written English. You cannot just say because he misunderstood the, the essay question, because it is incomplete, it's dependent, and it needs that main clause in order to be completed, in order to make sense, okay? So that's the complex sentence. That's basically the, the, the idea there. Okay, so let's look at a couple more examples and, and kind of the structure of the complex sentence. And then I'm going to get you guys to do some work. Okay, you guys are going to do some work for me. So first and foremost, I should move a little bit here. Oh, no, I'm good. This is perfect. Okay. Here is a list of very common conjunctions that we use to create dependent clauses, just like you'll see. You'll see because is on there, but really common ones like although, lots of time expressions like when or while or until, um, reason result kind of things like um, what we said because, right, um, as or since. All right, this is a good list of, of words to memorize. And, and actually, if, if our friendly moderator, Lane, can put the notes in the chat, I'll just pop out here for a second and just show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to make sure that he puts this in the chat so that everyone can follow the link. This is something that um, we looked at last week, but I actually added, I, I added some notes to it. So if you scroll down to the second page, you'll see I've, I've given you a, a pretty good list of uh, words that you can use to create complex sentences. Okay, so that's going to be in the chat. Let's go back into the, the notes here. Okay. So you're going to use all of those what we call subordinating conjunctions. I need to scroll down a little bit here. <laughs> okay. Scrolling down. Where's my list? There we go. Okay. So we've got this list of, of subordinating conjunctions. Again, don't worry too much about that term, subordinating conjunction. These are just your, your linking words that create dependent clauses. All right. And with the complex sentences, it's important to know you've got two options of, for the structure. Okay. Option A is your independent clause first, then your dependent clause. Option B is your dependent clause, and then, as you can see kind of behind me, your independent clause. Okay. These are interchangeable, and they're, the meaning is exactly the same. Really, the only difference that you have to be careful of is the comma, and that's where students kind of uh, make, make mistakes frequently, okay? You have to be careful of that comma. If you begin the complex sentence with the dependent clause, it has to be followed by the comma. All right, so let's look at some examples here. And then again, I'm going to get you guys to do um, some work for me. So number, or the first example, rather, he's afraid of small spaces because he had a traumatic experience as a child. And the other one, because he had a traumatic experience as a child, he's afraid of small spaces. It's the same thing. Just flipped. Okay, so there's your dependent clause at the, the second clause, and you notice that there is no comma before because here. Okay, you don't want to put a comma there. Don't need to. Because of because. In the next sentence, you've got because at the beginning, your dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence, you've got your conjunction there, and therefore you'll see that I am using the comma, because of because, right? So again, if you start with that one of those uh, conjunctions, you want to put the comma after the um, first clause there. Okay, let me show you one other example and then it's your turn to, to work, okay? so. Some young people have difficulty handling new responsibility when they first move out of their parents' home. Again, you've got your dependent clause there. When is your conjunction that creates the dependent clause? Therefore, no comma. In the second example, I'm starting with when. I'm starting with the dependent clause. Therefore, 
Oh, it's just that simple. If you follow that structure, you'll be, you'll be okay. All right, so before we continue, I should mention also another form of complex sentence that we're not going to talk about today because it's, it's the type of thing that really needs at least one lesson all to itself is this sentence here. The man who I had never met before was looking at me strangely. In this case, who I had never met before is a dependent clause, and this is a complex sentence. You've got who there, that relative pronoun. This is what we call a relative clause or an adjective clause, but we're not going to talk about that today. All right, that's for another lesson. Yeah, I look forward to it. So, this is what I'd like to do. I want to look at the difference between compound and complex sentences, but I want you guys to do some work for me. Okay, so if Lane can put up in the in the chat the link to this document okay this is your this is your exercise and I'm gonna give you some time to work on this um, I'm going to remove myself from the from the screen and put on some of that happy music for you guys to to work on okay so you've got about six or seven sentences there each of these sentences is a compound sentence. All you need to do is change it to try to make it a complex sentence, okay? Sounds easy, sounds simple, yeah? So this is um, easy. What do, you, what do you want to do? If you have a Google account, I should say, um, if you got Google, you wanna go into File here and, and make a copy of that. It doesn't matter, you can name it whatever you want, and then you can um, write your answers on there. Also, if you just want to keep this on the screen because I'm going to disappear, just put your answers into the chat and we'll put them up here on the screen and we'll talk about them together. Okay, so take the sentence, for example, the first one, Paul was putting the finishing touches on his assignment and he accidentally deleted the file. Okay, so how do you make that um, a complex sentence? Well, I'll do the first one because I'm nice. All right, I'm gonna put that here. What I'm gonna do, I'll, I'll get rid of that B. Okay, so how am I gonna change this to make it a complex sentence? I'm gonna keep it simple. Take that and out of there and put when. So, Paul was putting the finishing touches on his assignment when he accidentally deleted the file. Heartbreaking, terrible, but it's a good sentence. Okay, so now it's complex because I've got one independent and one dependent clause. Okay, so I'm going to put on some happy music, take a look at the rest of these sentences, make them complex, use some of those conjunctions that I gave you, and uh, then we'll go over it together, okay? All right, I'm out of here.
<laughs> All right. I should also mention, I know that this is, this is some challenging stuff here, guys, okay? Some of them are, are quite um, tricky. Some of them you might just have to change the word itself, kind of that connecting word. But I should mention that some of them you might have to change the order of the sentence or the grammar. I see that uh, B is, is quite a tricky one to start off with. I'm really uh, uh, testing you guys today, okay? So do what you can but you might have to change some of the grammar, the punctuation, the word order, but you want to make sure that the, the meaning is the same, but the, um, the structure is different, okay, from compound to complex. All right, you're doing good. Keep up the good work. I'm going to disappear again, okay?
All right, everybody, good stuff. Lots of answers coming in. Let's go over some of these um, together. Let me see if I can make this even bigger so everybody can see it. We'll go over them one at a time here. Yeah, there we go. So, B, we said the company needs to make changes to its product, otherwise it won't be able to keep up with the competition. Yeah, this was kind of a curveball uh, to throw you guys for the first one. It's kind of, a, it's probably the hardest one, maybe. It looks like Roberto figured it out and, and um, Sel was pretty close to it too. Yeah, I would say because of um, otherwise, is we usually use otherwise to show um, a condition meaning if not or unless, okay? So I, I see an unless here from Roberto and an if not here from, from Selma. Um, I would say in this case, unless the company makes changes to its product, it won't be able to keep up with the competition. That's perfect from Roberto. Uh, the company needs to make changes to its product. If not, it won't be able to keep up with the competition. This, this one's kind of a this one's kind of a tricky one. Um, really what you're looking at here, um, Selma, is what we call a complex, a compound complex sentence, where if you want this sentence to be complete, you would put a semicolon there because you've got a bunch of different ideas there. Um, I would maybe simplify it and say the company needs to make changes to its product if um, it wants to be able, right? If it wants to be able to keep up with the competition, the company needs to make changes to its product. Okay, there you go, complex sentences. Good stuff as well. If you guys have um, questions coming in at all about anything I'm saying, then um, let me know. Okay, let me get C up here above my, my head so you can read it. Um, C, some parents are afraid to give children peanuts or eggs before their first birthday. However, others want to introduce these foods much earlier. Yeah, it's kind of, these are, these are tricky. I'm going to be mean to you guys today. Okay, so I think John, John's got a complex sentence there. He says, because some parents are afraid to give children peanuts, others want to introduce these foods much earlier. Now, John, this is a good example of a complex sentence, but the logic is kind of, is not quite there, and it, you're kind of changing the meaning a little bit, because here I've got um, however, which is a contrast, right, to show things are, are different. Now what you've done, you've put in because, which typically shows reason results, right, a cause-effect relationship there. So rather than because, I would say a contrast word like this while some parents are afraid to give children peanuts, and you make that O small, you've got the, the comma there is beautiful, others want to introduce these foods much earlier. And, oh, that's exactly what Abdul number 12 said, um, just in reverse, which is perfect, because you see I've got, I've got the comma there, and Abdul has no comma there. Okay, awesome, all right. Uh, Roberto, we got you in the last one, so we'll, we'll move on down to D. Thanks for your answer. All right. What about D? Sam wanted to become more involved at school, so she joined uh, a number of extracurricular clubs. Coming in from Selma, we've got, she joined a number of extracurricular clubs because Sam wanted to become more involved at school. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Put a period there. Perfect. Roberto has the same idea, he just kind of flipped it. Because Sam wanted to become more involved, comma, she joined a number of clubs. Great. Now, this is, this is awesome here. This is Abdul. You've got Sam joined a number of extracurricular clubs to become more involved in school. Yeah, that's kind of a tricky one because that's not, this one's not quite a clause. Now this is actually a phrase, so this, I would call this actually a simple sentence because you've got, technically you've got no subject here. It's a good, it's a good sentence though. It's great. Okay, let's do a few more. All right. Read the instructions carefully, then you can begin to answer the questions. After you read the instructions carefully, you can begin to answer the questions. Perfect. Coming in from Selma. And you can begin to answer the questions after reading the instructions carefully. Good. 
Now this is even this is actually quite complex. This is what we call a participle clause. It is a, a, a complex sentence. Abdul, thank you for that. Good. F um, coming in from John. He says, because her mother was a free-spirited liberal, her father is a strict conservative. Now again, this is a good complex sentence, but the same issue that I mentioned before, John, you want to change that. So it's not cause and effect. It would be, how about um, although? Although her mother is a free-spirited liberal, her father is a strict conservative. Kind of a, a contrast here. And you've got her. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, okay. That's Sorry, that's, that's the answer for G, too. Kind of skipped that. That's why, I guess that's why I usually read the sentence first. So John's answer here is now a good answer for G, all right? Let's talk about F before we get to G, yeah? All right. So Molly wrote the introduction for the presentation. Meanwhile, Jade put together the visuals. And um, Roberto says, while Molly wrote the instruction for the presentation, Jade put together the visuals. Awesome. Great. Okay, let's do, how many do we, we got one more? H. Okay, employers wanted to increase productivity at work, therefore they blocked access to Facebook. All right, is it ta Tacky? Am I saying that right? Correct me in the chat if I'm saying your name wrong, okay, Tacky. It says, because employers wanted to increase productivity at work, they blocked access to Facebook. And if you put a little period there, then that is perfect. Okay, all right, so I should say every once in a while actually that if, if anybody's joining us, uh, welcome. We're talking about complex sentences here. And I should also mention that uh, um, if, you, if you like what you see, to subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel, to like us on Facebook or tell your friends or, or anything, okay? So um, thanks for joining and we're talking about complex sentences. I'll get you guys to do <clears throat> a little bit more work in a minute, but let's. I saw a couple questions coming up in the in the chat about kind of still what's the difference between compound and and complex sentences. So just so we're totally clear, let me specify <clears throat> one more time. Okay, there we go. Let me scroll all the way down my presentation here. And we're going to get into the main, the main difference between these things. OK, compound or complex. Um, oh yeah, Selma says, can you please check my answer on G? I definitely will. Just I'll come back to that in a moment, Selma. Thanks for that. OK, so just so we're clear. Compound complex. What's the difference? Let's get let's get a little corny here. Let's get some, let's get cheesy. All right. Looks like we cut out uh, for a sec, but you guys are back. All right. So let's look at it. So a compound sentence. This is what how I explain it to my students in class. Okay. A compound sentence is basically it's a marriage. Oh, that's nice. Okay, yeah. It's a marriage. How is it a marriage? It's a marriage between two sentences. It is two sentences. Sarah needs to, uh, to score a 6.5 on her IELTS, therefore she's taking private lessons. So you've got two sentences. They are independent. They are equal. They are strong on their own. They are fine on their own. They can exist on their own. That's fine. But if you want to bring them together, then you know they make each other stronger. Wow, well, that's corny. That's uh, it's touching, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is this is the compound sentence, right? Sarah needs to score a 6.5 on her IELTS. Therefore, she's taking private lessons twice a week to prepare. All right, that's your that's your marriage. All right. So a complex sentence is not a marriage at all. All right, not at all. It's a different relationship entirely. It is more like the the parent-child relationship, the mother-daughter or mother-son relationship, okay? Independence and dependence, all right? So what do I mean by that? I mean, here's a, here's a complex sentence. Because Sarah needs to score a 6.5 on her IELTS test, she is taking private lessons twice a week. Again, that's, that's fine. That's a great sentence. Now, 
there's your independent clause again like the mother it's fine right it's, it can exist on its own up here you've got the dependent clause which does add or give meaning or make the second clause stronger but on its own it's it's a problem all right so you can't just have because Sarah needs to score a 6.5 on her IELTS test that in itself is incomplete and it's what we call a sentence fragment all right and much like well oh that's that's sad look how sad that is alone the dependent clause um, is in big trouble or Maybe you're in big trouble if you write too many of them in your essays, okay? So avoid this sad-looking um, dependent clause, all right? <laughs> so let's get, let's get back in there for a second. Let's take a look at, at uh, Selma's question. What was qu Selma's question? Which one? You said G? Let me go down to G here before I give you some more work to do. All right, did I skip over, skip over this one? Okay, so Selma wants me to take a look at this one. Her father is a strict conservative. However, her mother is a free-spirited liberal. Um, her father is a strict, strict conservative, though her mother is a free-spirited liberal. Yeah, that's not, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, though and although, sometimes we use them to kind of show um, what we call a concession contrast, which, again, is something we'll talk m in more detail about um, in another class. Oftentimes when you show a really surprising difference, um, which I guess you could argue that this is a surprising difference, I think more naturally I would say something like while. Her father's a strict conservative while um, her mother is a free-spirited spirited liberal. But though is grammatically correct. It's, it's fine, yeah. And you didn't put the comma there, which is, which is perfect. All right? So Wow, that's basically, that, that almost wraps it up for today. Time flies when you're talking about complex sentences, all right? So, so how about this? Um, let's, let me give you some, a little bit of, maybe some homework. Whoops, let me get that out of there. Okay, the second part of this exercise, we didn't get to, but that's fine. You can do that on your own at home, all right? And basically, you've got three, three pairs of sentences. Um, the man was slowing down his car to stop at a red light. He was rear-ended by an SUV. All I want you guys to do is make two different types of sentence with these two sentences. I want you to co combine them in two different ways. So one compound and one complex. Because again, the whole point of this is variety, right? It's about spicing up your writing long sentences, short sentences, compound, complex, simple. Show your range, especially if it's on an English test or something like that. The teacher or your evaluator wants to see the range of your language abilities, so show them, all right? Um, do that, and when we come back next week, you can throw your answers into the chat, and I'll, uh, I'll go over them um, with you, okay? In the meantime, do this, and we'll hopefully see you here next week. And uh, again, as I said, if you, if you like it, if you like the, uh, the lesson and you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, um, like us on Facebook, give us a shout out, and uh, let's get more students going here, okay? So um, thanks for joining. Um, I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to pop out here, all right, and... Yeah, same time next week, Wednesday, 3 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, I had fun. I hope you did too. And um, I'm out of here. All right, see you next time.